Hey y'all, welcome back to Rated RPG, your number one channel for gaming news and commentary. Uh, we all remember 2015, it was a... I, I actually don't remember if it was a great time or not. But regardless, 2015 E3 was a wonderful time for many people, and it's still a wonderful time for me going back and watching some reaction vids, because at E3 2015, we got our Final Fantasy VII Remake announcement, and people were happy. There was much jubilation in the streets, but in addition to that was the announcement of Shinmu 3. Shinmu, as some of you may remember, originally came out for this handy-dandy fella here, and it was a good game. I... Personally, did not play Shenmue on the Dreamcast back then. I've played the PlayStation Remaster. But it still holds up. It's a good open worldish game. There's lots to do. Many, many, many games. It's basically a good old-fashioned revenge story. Kung Fu story. And it's, there is enjoyment to be had here even years later. Shinmu 2 came out on the Xbox, I believe. Is that correct? But, whatever. And now, Shinmu 3 announced 2015. It's like, hey, Shinmu 3, we want it to be a thing. And everyone was like, yes, we want to buy it. And they're like, oh, by the way, it's a Kickstarter. And I think it was funded within a week. Uh, over $6 million, I believe, was the total. If I have that number wrong, let me know in the comments down below. I'm sure you will anyway. But... That sweet deal, that sweet Kickstarter, which had prizes going as high up as if you donate however many thousands of dollars, you'll get a free jacket and we'll fly you out to have dinner with whoever, uh, the game director. That sweet deal has apparently gone sour for many of the Kickstarter backers. Kickstarter is something I've always been wary of because... Honestly, you have no idea what you're getting into when it comes to Kickstarter. You could be getting into a good deal and be able to get access to some great stuff. You may be on the ground floor of a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Or you could end up just funneling money into a pipe dream and nothing come out of it. Shenmue 3, there is going to be something that comes out of it. There will be a video game, Shenmue 3, which comes out in August. Yes, August. But here's the problem. Normally, if you are a backer on a Kickstarter, you are guaranteed some sort of either extra access or uh, just something extra to go along with the product. Something that gives you value for being an investor in this product's creation. So if you are investing in a cooler that has a iPhone jack in it, uh, it may... Be just the fact that you have early access to it because you helped fund development, so you get one of the er earliest ones off the uh, factory floor. Shinmu and many other video games that have been Kickstarters, it's always been understood. If you were one of the backers, you get everything. There are some of these backers who are just throwing in 20 bucks, but some of them are throwing in thousands of dollars, and they are not getting anything besides the base game. The base game, I'm sure, will have much, much value. But there is issue now. And that is, if you are a Kickstarter backer, you will not be getting pre-order bonuses. And you will not be getting access to the Season Pass. Now, Season Pass versus Kickstarter uh, pre-order bonuses, I have kind of two differing opinions on the severity of that. The Season Pass, I am not a fan of Season Passes. If I want DLC, I want to just be able to buy it. If there is a thing I want, I don't like Season Passes. And especially Season Passes for RPGs, because is it going to be just cosmetic items? Is it going to be uh, pay-to-win type weapons? Or is it going to be some sort of story mechanic or story DLC that you can only get through the Season Pass and will not be able to purchase later separately? So, I'm not saying they would do that. I'm just saying I'm very wary when it comes to Season Passes, especially for story-driven content. 
That said, while I do think it's certainly a jerk move not to give Kickstarter backers the season pass, I can slightly understand. I can slightly understand it. I'm not. I don't approve of it, but I can understand it. That maybe, uh, in the developer's mind, hey, you were just kickstarting the base game, so you're going to get the base game and any. DLC we create later on after initial development is not going to be part of the Kickstarter. I don't approve of that, but I can understand the mentality. That said, if there's content that is only locked behind the... No, just basically, I understand the mentality, but I don't approve of it. I do think Kickstarter backers of Shinmu 3 should have access to the Season Pass, but I understand. The thing I don't understand, though, is pre-order bonuses. First of all, I think pre-order bonuses are stupid. I am guilty of pre-ordering game, pre games so I can get pre-order bonuses. So I'm a hypocrite in that instance. Uh, but I still think it's pre-order bonuses are stupid. They're just gimmicks to try to get people to give their money up front or even just a make a pre-order up front so that the... Uh, games company can be like, oh, look at all of our sales, all of our potential sales. This proves we're doing well. Well, let me tell you, that doesn't actually prove anything because I pre-ordered Anthem just so I could get into the VIP demo, and oh boy, did I cancel that pre-order. But back to pre-order bonuses, I think they're stupid, but I do think it, this is different than season pass content. Season pass content could be DLC that is made after the main game has been developed, Pre-order content, though, that is technically DLC, but it has been created beforehand so that it can be included with the base game at launch. So this is already created content, content that they have created while in the de initial development of this game. And so by not including that pre-order content in the Kickstarter campaign... That means they are not including content that was paid for by the Kickstarter money. So that is just atrocious. And it's kind of underhanded, I think, this much more than the season pass. Because what are these folks going to do? Are they going to go to GameStop or Amazon or whatever and pre-order a separate copy and then pay for it just so they can get some DLC items? I don't think so. And yes, they... Okay. It, it has been said, you can still buy these pre-order items as separate DLC. But that's not what... That, that makes no sense. Basically, these folks forked over money as Kickstarter backers to help you develop the DLC. And now you're saying, thanks for giving us the money to build the product. Now you can pay for the product. That'd be like if I financed the iPhone 10 and then was expected to pay for an iPhone 10 after it was done being developed. I would never buy an iPhone though. I'm an Android guy, but the point is it makes no sense. So this really is a horrible move. I think on the developers part and they need to rectify this. It's getting a lot of press coverage and people are not happy about it. Now the stuff going on with them going, uh, onto Epic and being exclusive on Epic for PC, I've made clear my feelings on the Epic Game Store on this channel. I don't mind the Epic Game Store. I think it's healthy competition. I don't necessarily think that the Epic Game Store is the best thing. There are definitely features that are missing from the Epic Game Store that Steam has, but I do think Steam has too much of a monopoly that is based solely upon its just just on its size and the fact that it was one of the first around there. And people keep saying, well, yeah, but there's things like good old games around. Yeah, good old games gets very little market share compared to Steam. I think Steam just has way too much of a market share. And I also think that the idea that a new launcher constitutes uh, exclusives, I mean, and, and the idea that having to install a new launcher is anything more than an inconvenience. 
I'm, I'm sorry, I don't buy that. I'm probably upsetting people but when I say that, but that's my personal opinion, and you are not required to believe that. So, as far as the Epic Games exclusives, exclusivity goes, I'm not against it. But the thing with the exclusivity that the developer is, again, making a big mistake is telling backers that, no, you cannot get a refund just because it's not going to be on Steam. They promised ahead of time that it would be on Steam. And yes, they then moved over to Epic because I'm sure Epic gave them some money. And then not allowing folks to back out after that, I think, is another jerk move. Fortunately, Epic Games has said, we are going to eat the cost of those refunds. Some There are some folks out there who treat Epic Games like they are suddenly uh, the devil incarnate, but they are, at the very least, good businessmen who uh, are not going to 100% stick it to you. So the fact that they're covering these refunds is definitely a good thing, and I say good on you, Epic Games, for that. I don't wholly approve of all of your methods of poaching games that have already signed deals with Steam, but I do appreciate your willingness to make all the branches to those who thought that they were going to be able to get a game on Steam. So all this to say, Shenmue 3 will sell. It's going to sell to a niche community. As far as, from what I understand, the graphics aren't all that spectacular. They're not going to be next-gen stuff. This is not going to set the bar as far as graphics goes, but I'm sure anyone who's played Final Fantasy 13 versus Final Fantasy 6 can tell you, graphics don't make the game. So I'm not necessarily pinning all my hopes on good graphics. I'm hoping for good gameplay and especially good story. So, And we know that there is a desire out there for good story, despite whatever people working at EA may say. So that is our report on Shinmu today. It's definitely controversial, and it's definitely a lack of, I don't know, just good, uh, I don't know, what's the term I want to use, sportsmanship on the part of the Shinmu development team who really need to get their acts together on this. Season pass, understand it, don't approve of it, pre-order content, dick move, you need to give that to your Kickstarter backers. And uh, the Steam uh, refusal to refund policy, again, dick move. You should be paying those refunds, and Epic should not have had to step in to do that, but good on Epic for doing it. Uh, so thanks for tuning in to Rated RPG. I'm Ray. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel. If you agreed with what you heard, let me know. If you disagreed... Let me know as well. I want to have a good conversation with you. So thanks for tuning in. Have a good night. So please like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that bell icon so you can get all the latest gaming news from Rated RPG.